Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so 8-man TOA 300 raids, these are a 26% chance on average for a purple. And I want to kind of get in here and show you guys all how it's done, what to look out for. So the first boss up is Zebek. You really don't need any gear to do these raids, by the way. Like, you can go in here with a trident, a rune crossbow, and a dragon sword, and you'll be fine. Although you just won't get a whole bunch of points, which will reduce your individual purple roll. But basically what you do, you run in here, Zebek, you just spread out so that the blood uh, barrage spell does not hit a bunch of players. And then the way that you handle jugs is basically if there's a jug that you can hit personally, then you should hit it. Otherwise, just let other players take care of it. Don't run across the room and try to hit jugs. So like right there, you can see my jug was unfortunately stacked. Now we have these guys, uh, blood spawns that are underneath us. This is really rare, honestly, it never happens. It's like one of those rare scenarios where you just kind of got to out heal that. Because like I said, that never happens. Um, getting the blood spawns stacked on the pillar like that where you have to stand still. There was the blood spell, I forgot to click it. And the other thing with Zebek is that with uns upset stomach on, there is almost always acid that will spawn directly underneath you with eight players. So just make sure you're paying attention to that and moving uh, as soon as the acid lands on the ground. Big thing with Zebek too is making sure it's like right here I can hit either of these jugs, so I'll take care of it. Big thing on Zebek is making sure that you aren't using any supplies. If you hit all your prayers correctly, even if you stand on acid pools and have stuff happen like where those bloods just sat on top of us all, uh, you really shouldn't need to use supplies this whole fight. A lot can go wrong. I'll take one sip of Super Restore. You can use up to one whole Restore if you need to. Right there I was preemptively moving in case that spawn was underneath me. Other than that we just keep hitting the boss. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Probably won't be my MVP, although I do have a decent amount of points. Take another sip of Restore, even though I don't think I need it. If you have to Karis spec here, it's fine. Uh, to be honest, bringing 8 Super Restores with the Karis I never really have to use it, to be 100% honest. Uh, all the brews that I bring in, so just something to keep in mind. And now I cry because it wasn't my MVP. And never lucky. 2600 points though, not bad for the first boss. Kefri's next. The boss order for these raids is pretty much always the same. You always do Zebek, Kefri, Akka, into Baba. Kefri is pretty standard as well in terms of this uh, puzzle room. I try to do the pillar one myself every time just to get it out of the way, but I'm kind of chilling here. We'll do this next puzzle though, since it's not pillars. I couldn't see which was which because I don't have it 117 on. Looks like those guys are really struggling with that one over there. And we'll let them flip it and handle it. I'm just gonna run over to the corner tile over here and let them take care of it. And I kinda lagged there as well. So on 300 invocation raids, the big difference between these and a 410 is that you don't trap the melee scarab. You just go all in, you drop the dung on the southwest tile. I do not know what these guys are doing. They'll figure it out though, I believe in them. Looks like they have it figured out. <laughs> so we're on a Kefri now. So basically, I'm, I don't know exactly how this mechanic works. If it picks the first two players on the scoreboard or the first two players in the room. But the general idea is here, 
If you're going to have the flies on you, you stand on the southwest tile. If you have no idea, just stand there to be safe. It's not on me, it's on them. So they're going to get knocked back. And then we spread apart across the room to deal with these scarab swarms. I actually kind of messed up um, and didn't kill that first one. But we should be fine. I'm going to combat pot here too. I totally forgot. Now we're going to get these dungs here. And I'm going to kill as many of these as I can. It helps put Karos on here. You're going to kill an extra one. You get points for them. Um, and for killing them, it doesn't spawn any Agile Scarabs. So you can see that guy actually just lost a lot of points. And um, a lot in general. Now right here, we have to make sure that we pop our any poison The melee Scarab is on me, I think. No, he's not. If he is, you can either freeze him or you can uh, just kind of walk under him until this spitting scarab is dead to avoid taking damage. Kind of forced into leaving my protect from range on because all those agile scarabs got through. Other than that, we'll take care of this melee scarab. It's always range and then melee and while the rest of the players blow pipe and do whatever they're doing. I just take care of the scarabs. You can do whatever you want. If you'd rather blow pipe here, obviously you can do that. It's not, not a big deal. We're gonna get knocked back here. Hopefully not. Okay, that was really close. So since we're on this side of the boss where the ranger spawned, we're just gonna hit the ranger. And when the mage jumps, which he's gonna do in a second here, we'll start running over and we'll hit the mage. And this is the best way, in my opinion, to handle this. And then we'll run back and we'll kill the ranger. The mage, if it jumps again, jumps over there and uh, the players on that side of the room will continue to take care of the mage. Other than that, the big thing here is just dodging whatever's on the floor. So it really helps if you pay attention to your own tiles as well as other players' tiles. Because basically, if you just step on any tile in the room that no one else is on at any point in time, you're always safe. And that's, I think, the best way to look at this. Other than that, we just spread back out, pretty straightforward. Dump some special attack energy since I know I'm safe now. I tend to hold off on the start and not BGS or anything like that. I mean, I don't even have my BGS with me right now. But that's just in case something goes wrong. Uh, I'm not going to care spec here. Even if I lag and disconnect, a ball isn't going to kill me. Uh, so I'll just carry a seal the next time those big black balls come out. Like I said, you always want to kill those big black balls. It saves you a lot of prayer points because you don't have to worry about... Um, the agile scarab stall. So like right here, we'll kill as many of these as we can. You'll see that guy not doing anything. And that's fine. More points for me, right? Oh, that one almost hit me. <laughs> and then right here, we just try to make sure we're as spread as possible. I wasn't paying attention, so I didn't realize Kefri was going down. Uh, but you pretty much always want to be on a diagonal tile when Kefri's low health and going to knock you back right there. Keep hitting the agile or the scarab swarms. I keep forgetting what they're called. We'll hit these just for extra points here, and then we'll hit, go back and cover you. Be cover you. And no MVP. Never lucky. I did do 20% of the damage to the scarab, so which is pretty good for an eight man. And now we're on Aka. Big thing with 300s. Uh, try to get comfortable taking power and avoiding taking chaos. Uh, because it, it's necessary for 410 raids to do that. If you want to just chill and make it through the raids and never have any problems, you could always take chaos. Like you will 99% of the time never die with chaos. It is going to severely impact your ability to get a purple if you never have salts for like a quarter of the raid because you're taking chaos though. And you only get one salt. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Let these bad boys figure this puzzle out since I got a late start in the room and while they're doing that so boom that turns green when this turns green again we stand one or two tiles away boom and we click it right as it turns green and we get an extra hit in sometimes this is a one down sometimes it's a two down kind of depends on everyone's mining level Go into the bag, we'll pull out a salt and a liquid adrenaline. Now if you don't know what to do, if you don't know how to butterfly Aka, then just don't go in here and let other players handle it. 
Um, you don't have to Butterfly Aka and you don't have to Red X Baba on these invocations, but it definitely does help. It speeds up the raid, and so if someone knows how to Butterfly, just let them do it. This guy's going to do it. The way that you let other players know that you're going to Butterfly is by going in there with Prey Melee on early. And then if Akka's not on you, that guy's kind of behind on ticks. Um, but if Akka's not on you, you just kind of DD right here, and that way you can skip and handle all the specials appropriately. Basically, if there's a black uh, ball special, you don't move at all. If there's a white light special, you either DD or get diagonal of another player, and if you can't do that, you just run away from everyone. Other than that, this fight is pretty chill, especially when someone butterflies. Sometimes the butterfly will stop, which it will probably happen here because our DPS is kind of low. I just realized absolutely no one has thralls. So boom, we turned white. So right now we're going to DD. And no one gets hit as a result. And if we turned black there, we just wouldn't move. So this guy that was right there just would have stood still. Uh, it is kind of fine with feeling special not on the black orbs. Like if no one else is underneath you, you can move. But it's just good habit for four tens to just not move at all. I really recommend learning the butterfly so that even if Akka changes aggro and goes on you, you can take care of it. Because, like I said, this fight is really free and it's really easy uh, when someone butterflies. The last phase on an 8-man is really free. And so what you're concerned about on this fight is really this phase right here. Um, getting Akka down without dying and messing up the memory pattern specials or anything else. There we go, Akka swapped. So we'll get ready to do a melee swap. We're black, which means we can't really move. But because no one's underneath me, I actually can move here if I have to. But I think we'll turn normal here. So I'll wait a second, and then we'll go as soon as we turn back normal. Now we have the memory pattern. Akka's level 2, so there are going to be 5 of these, so 1, 2, and that guy just burned all of us, unfortunately. 3, 4, and the way that you check Akka's level is by the little number next to Akka's name at the top left of my screen. Might be at a different location on your screen, but generally speaking, here we go, Akka's on me, so I can get ready to start butterflying if I have to. And we're going to actually kind of preemptively move over here. See that guy kind of moving there. I can move since no one is underneath me. And that's what we'll do just so that if I have to start butterflying, I can be in cycle here. just disconnected, how amazing. Now we'll do our full melee switch, we'll pray mage, we'll get our prayer up. I'm actually going to care spec pretty early here since I'm missing a bit of health. Uh, and two balls is enough to kill me. But other than that, if you kind of just stay stacked here, you should be good. The balls do do reduce damage if you're stacked. They do reduce damage if you're praying mage. Um, you can turn redemption on, obviously, if you get really low. Like, if I get hit by two more balls, I'll probably use redemption. Just make sure that redemption doesn't put you at zero prayer if you need to care or spec. That's the number one thing I'd say. For Akka, now we are on to Baba. Baba is pretty straightforward. Red Xing again helps a lot. It's really good to know. 
makes the fight brain dead. Uh, but yeah, the puzzle room itself is really easy. You just have to make sure that you DD if someone calls it out and that you're paying attention to where they're at. Other than that, you have to make sure that each thing, like if it's pillars, each pillar needs to be repaired. So if there's people in each quadrant in the room, what you can do is either stand in the middle of the room and kind of catch people when they're not doing their job. Something like that. So he said vents so will kind of pay attention and see what everyone's doing. Looks like everyone has their quadrant in the room figured out, so I'm just going to kind of stand in the middle and uh, be a floater. And that way if anyone misses something, I can go catch it for them. I do have ancient spells here, which is pretty much the only room that you can use them in in this entire raid, other than Zibek puzzle room. And so what I'll do is whenever these cursed baboons come out, I'll freeze them. And uh, if there's stacks of thralls or anything like that, we'll take care of those as well. So he said DD, so we look where he's at. He's on the south side of the pillar. We run, we go take care of it. Barrage didn't go off twice there. I misclicked the second time, but the first time I don't know. So he said DD again. We look to see where he's at. He's over here. DD, we're getting some thrall stacks now. Along with that melee stack, so we will barrage that. We'll barrage this guy. Looks like someone else is already on it too. If you're really good at this monkey puzzle room, you can get a ton of points here. And when I say a ton, I mean more than literally any boss. So don't sleep on this puzzle room. So he said pillars. We'll make sure everyone's getting a pillar. I don't know if someone got that pillar there. Yeah, they didn't. So that guy just got it now. And we should be good. He said DD again. He was on the north side, but there's poison over there, so we just went to the south side. And I can't believe I just walked on that and took damage like that. Um, so going into Baba, Baba will always target whoever has the lowest health. Um, and he does it on an attack cycle. So if you go in the room and you have the lowest health, he'll target you. And so if you're red Xing, you kind of wait. I'll show you guys what a red X looks like so that if you want to red X, you can. So we basically run in. We turn Prey from melee on, we step on this tile or really any tile, Baba's going to go on us. We hit Baba as soon as he reaches us, we step to the side, we start walking underneath him. As soon as we're two tiles out, then we click him, and then click on the crystal as soon as the explosion goes off. Baba's going to drop a boulder in a second here, so when we're coming back out here, we have to just avoid hitting Baba and prioritize dodging that boulder because it will hit me for like 50 damage. So we lose a little bit of damage, but we make the fight really safe and really easy. Baba will no longer throw boulders. Baba's not going to melee anyone. There's nothing really hectic or anything like that going on. So we do this. A friend just got a teleport anchoring scroll, so we'll tell him grats. Um, and then right here, I mean, I'm just not going to hit the boulders, but I would really recommend to hit the boulders. It's just because I don't have a blowpipe switch, and Tebow does absolutely nothing. So right here, we'll skip the boulders. We'll run up here. Baba, even though I have the lowest health, Baba's not going to go on me because Baba was just on me. So the way that you can fix that if you want to just keep red Xing if you have the lowest health is by letting Baba melee you before Baba jumps. And then Baba will change targets and then be on you. This guy just messed the red X up, so we're going to get a boulder. Looks like I got kind of chance there. The monkey spawned underneath me. I was able to take care of it as a result. We'll carry spec here so that Baba does not go back on me. Um, I, as long as you're full health in this room and staying topped off, you don't have to worry at all. That guy just got a chance and killed. He should have just stayed at the sarcophagus. There were four of us at the boulder, and he should have been paying attention to that. But anyways, as long as you're overhealed and full health, like Baba will literally never go on you, so you don't have to worry about it. 
we'll put the Tebow on here and hit it, but it literally hits 10s, 14, so that's why I don't normally do this. Even with a full range switch, it hits like 15. We'll hit Baba, we'll hit Baba again, and we'll hit Baba one more time. That guy is trying to red X. It, this is why learning how to red X is really good because this guy is really low health. Baba's on him. Baba hits through prayer at this stage of the fight and Baba hits really hard through prayer. So you really want to make sure that you're either red Xing or just running around the room at this point if Baba's on you and you're low health like that. Obviously he just care respect, but you can see like he's literally giving up all damage he's doing just to stay alive. But it's better in my opinion to stay alive than anything else to happen. So we'll stand here, but I have to make sure no one else comes to that boulder, because only two of us could soak that boulder. So basically, if anyone else ran to that boulder, I probably would have just booked it to a sarcophagus so that I didn't get chanced and killed. I did 20% of the damage, and I did not get the MVP. That is kind of nuts. Alright, always take life last. The Ambrosias are a lifeline for Wardens, and you should have an extra salt from taking power. Unless you took Chaos. You really only need three sips of salt as well. And then right here, I basically just pull out what I need from my bag as I'm running two Wardens. It's really good to keep these raids as fast-paced as possible, so that you can be as efficient as possible and get as many done as possible. We'll go in and we'll stare wardens here. We'll put on augury. And there is a guy soaking. It's always good to double check and make sure someone's tanking. I have died before because no one tanked and soaked. Believe it or not, it's actually happened like twice. So always make sure someone's over there soaking. Because <laughs> uh, otherwise you'll just die and everyone's going to blame each other. So the fight starts. Warden's fight on an 8-man. Entity Hider definitely helps, but I don't really play with Entity Hider. I have my two tiles right here to let me know the safe spots for the UFOs. Other than that, you just spread apart when the balls come, and then you get together for the second ball, which most of the time you end up skipping uh, on an 8-man. And then I have my tile marked over here, which is where I stand when fighting Eladinus' Warden, because uh, we only ever have to move one tile at a time. So there's the ball, and we basically just move, and we pay attention where everyone else is going, and we make sure to keep spreading. And that's really the hardest mechanic of this whole fight. Now we get the big ball, and it's kind of a 50-50. We might beat it, we might get it. So we got it anyways. So right here, I'll just Ambrosia, since I'm really low health and really low prayer. That way I'm not brewed down and stuff when this guy comes out. Spam click this guy, we start hitting this bad boy. You can stand next to those red balls and avoid them, or you can just run away from them. If you're like already five tiles away, it's probably worth it to just run away. We're gonna pop our liquid adrenaline early here. Get ready for wardens to kind of fall over. So wardens will fall over after my next attack. So I can put all this gear on, put my DDS on, put piety on. I can spec five times and then get an extra hit in. If you have BGS, you probably want to use that, otherwise you can just use whatever. It doesn't really matter because you really want to three down these for the extra purple chance. So getting as much damage off there does not really change anything. Because you don't even get points for doing damage there. It's just for me personally, it's an XP thing. This is what I meant about only ever having to move one tile. Anytime either of the floor patterns comes out, you'll need to move one tile to be safe when you're on this row of tiles.
go in for the fang hit and then dump the rest of our DDS specs for maximum XP. Might be, yeah, I was gonna say, probably won't get that extra spec off. Right here we'll heal just so that we're full health in case anything goes wrong. And again with those roots just make sure you step anywhere that another player is not. Trust me there's hundreds of tiles. So right here, we'll just do a partial switch. We'll keep hitting this. Usually Warden says less health and it's close to being a two down and you basically have to hop off of DPS to make sure it's a three down. And now we're at the very end. And this part is really easy, honestly. Once you make it to this part of Wardens, you really should never die. I kind of lagged here and disconnected, unfortunate. And if you want to be cool, you can be like me and skip uh, the floor mechanics and look like a total pro, just to make the fight a bit more entertaining. Also throws other players off. not actually that cool to skip. It just feels cool. But it's not that cool. Also, we don't need to be praying mage here. I don't know why I am. Zebek spawns now, and it's almost always magic first. It can be range first, but it's really rare. I'd say like one out of uh, every 100 raids, he'll do range first. friend just got three of those scrolls right next to each other that was kind of nuts i don't know if you guys are looking at clan chat or if you look at it he literally just got two back to back and he just got one five minutes ago right there i had to tank a boulder not much i can do about it i'm just gonna pop an ambrosia to make sure i'm topped off before we go into the very end which we still have one more down part but I'm not gonna lie, this part of the fight is really boring. It's a lot more fun with Insanity on. With Insanity off, it's kind of eh.
Alrighty, and there you guys go. We'll send a little push up off the edge, and we'll give it a Fortis salute before we go into. And we look at the disappointing white light or someone else's purple. I do want to check the leaderboards in this one though. And never purple, never lucky. But that is a 308 man on these worlds. I had the most damage that entire raid. And I didn't get a single MVP on any boss. I actually want to take a picture of this. That is kind of nuts. Kind of nuts. But anyways, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good rest of your day.